G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. I felt like a really happy little project today. So I've created a little sewing machine mini quilt. Now, this is something that's close to all of our hearts, I'm sure, but it would make a fabulous gift for somebody who also is like-minded. So perfect for diving into your stash and uh, pulling out all of those little bits of fabrics you never thought you'd get to use. So you need a great pattern and I have one of those for you and it's free. You just need to click on the link in the description below and you can download those free pattern templates. Remember to set your printer setting at, to print at actual size and then those templates will be the perfect size for you all. So what are we waiting for? Let's get sewing. So let's talk about the things that we're going to need to make up our little quilt today. I've made up this little mini quilt just all in little quilting cottons and I have used felt for the little sewing machine and the little flowers and so on. So our first panel that we cut out is our centre top panel here. We do some quilting on top of that but this centre panel measures 22 centimetres by 17 centimetres and then we have a lower panel and I've cut the lower panel to be 22 centimetres by 5 centimetres. Now I've actually shortened it since that one um, just to square it up just a little and I've used a really busy print across that bottom there and then our next thing we'll need are our side pieces and our side strips are 22 centimetres by 3 centimetres and they will frame up our little quilt and the top strips are 26 and a half centimetres by 3 centimetres. So you can see that that just frames up our little quilt beautifully. Because I'm doing my sewing machine black, I've just chosen a print that is predominantly black there and I find that all balances it out. I'm going for very retro sort of eclectic colour mix here but you can do yours in anything you like and of course your sewing machine doesn't have to be black you could do that any colour at all. So we're then going to be adding some quilted strips on the back of this panel here. So I've cut just a selection of strips and they're not interfaced. These fabrics are they're all interfaced. I just like to have a more stable little quilt when it's finished, especially if it's going to be a wall hanging. And I've got just a series of strips. I've got about 12 there cut and no interfacing and just random little pastels that won't interfere or compete too much with the, the final picture of that little sewing machine. And I've got about 12 cut and they are around about 18 to 19 centimetres, they extend beyond, we're going to trim it up. And I've cut them all three, about three centimetres wide, but I have cut a couple of them to two centimetres wide, just so that it varies because we're not piecing in any, any sort of perfect manner, we're just going to quilt as we go. Um, it's better if it's just a little bit random. So I've got a couple of little narrow ones in there as well, just to break that up and we'll be stitching those into place. So, and then we also need our little sewing machine. Now I've cut mine in felt just because I think it's nice and bold and it's very easy to work with. Now remember when you're cutting out tracing to cut out your little sewing machine, of course you've got heat and bond on the back of that one. Remember to reverse it to the direction that you want it to actually look because when, when we cut it out this way, of course, when we press it on, it's going to be going this way. So this is the way I wanted it to sit. And so that's how I've cut it. So I've got that one and I've also got my little pieces, which all have heat and bond. So I've got a little heart that sits down here, then a little flower up here, another little flower here. And I've got a couple of little leaves to add in there. And they will be all pressed into place and we will do a bit of stitching around those and you also need some little buttons. Now I like to have a little button at the top here and I like to use a little metal button there and similarly for this just to indicate a little dial there and also centering my little flowers I've got my little buttons there and you'll also need um, some embroidery thread if you're going to be hand sewing around that little heart as I do. You'll also need, when we're finished, 
the front section we're going to need just some fine batting. I've used uh, just cotton batting that is that's very fine and it wasn't fusible so I've added some heat and bond to the back so that it is. We're going to cut that piece once we've done our front. So we're going to cut it to just a centimetre smaller than our front. So just have that piece ready and similarly for the back I have my fabric ready and it is interfaced and we're going to cut the back once we've got our assembled front. It just makes it easier overall. So that's pretty straightforward. So our first step, I'm going to move all these out of the way. Our first step is going to be to do our little, our little, what I call, I'm calling it quilting detail. I don't really know what it is. It, it's just the way that I do it. I don't profess to be a quilter. Quilters, please don't come at me and tell me off. Um, this is, uh, basically, I think I just make pictures with fabric because I'm an illustrator. So this is how I do it. So move all those out of the way and we've got our top centre panel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch. I'm going to take two, two of my little strips and I'm putting them right sides together. And I'm going to line them up with the base here and with the edge there exactly along that edge. We want to make sure we're getting it all nice and straight because we're doing strips we want them to be straight. So I've got two there, one on top of the other right sides together and I've got them on top, directly on top of our fabric. So what we're going to do is take that one to the machine and we're going to stitch those two pieces on right up to the top there just in a straight line and then we're going to press the first, the, the second one over. So you can see there, and this might make it easier to see now that it's actually sewn on there. So you can see that I put my two strips together, right sides together, onto the right side of that fabric there, our little panel. And then I stitch and I'm using a four millimeter seam allowance right throughout, which is a little bit smaller than a quarter inch. And then I've been able to take that one to my iron and just press that one over. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to continue adding our little strips in the same manner. So each time I'm going to put my right sides together, line it up at the top there, and I'm going to stitch down and then I'm going to flip it over each time and press it each time. So now is where you can have a little look at your strips and decide what sort of pattern you want. And as I said, I've got some little thinner ones that I'll be adding in just to break up the sizing of that one. So I've got a little blue one here, so that'll be a little further along so just alternate your sizes, but it's just a matter of stitching it, each one on, pressing it over, next one, next one, until you're right the way to the edge there. We can trim off any excess. There we go, you can see I've got all of my strips sewn on, press them as I've gone along, and now I've just trimmed those, just the excess off, and wherever I've needed to on the side. So our next step is to add our little sewing machine, and I've removed my backing paper. And we actually line it up with the bottom of our little panel there, right along the base and make sure that you've got it the same distance either side from your edges here. And we just press that one into place using a hot iron and a protective cloth. And then we're gonna come back and stitch that one on. Now once my little sewing machine piece is pressed on, I've then gone ahead to my machine and sewn in black because my machine is black I've sewn right the way around that entire edge there and I've also when I've got to this section I've just gone and joined up and sewn that little stitch twice so that we've got that little connection there now because I've done mine in in black felt and of course you don't have to use felt for the machine you can use uh, fabric will be absolutely fine because I've done it in black I like to add a little bit of a highlight. Now your machine might be a different colour so you won't need to do this step. But you can see on this one that I've gone ahead with my lighter thread, this case just an off-white, and I've sewn just 
on a couple of the curves here just to indicate a bit of a light reflect. So we've got the, the bottom section there, just up the side there, just thinking about where the light would hit. So the bottom section just up to here along that top edge and just on the, our little wheel there because that just um, separates that section from that section and just highlights it there. So if you're working with a darker fabric, it's a good idea to put that stitching in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again, just in my white, uh, in my white thread. Okay, so you can see my little, my little four stitching lines. I just think that makes that little machine just pop just a little bit nicer. So our next step is to plan where we're going to put our little flower appliques and our little stitching that goes in between it. Now I'm going to keep this as simple as I can. You can see the layout that I've got here. First of all, let me show you on this one. So we've got a little heart at the bottom and we've got our little flowers coming out of it and a couple of little leaves up here. So we're going to pop the flowers temporarily in place and arrange our little leaves and then we're going to draw our little stem line ready to stitch which I'm going to do on the machine. Now of course you can do it by hand if you feel like you've got more control you can do it by hand you can see it perhaps you can see it a little easier just to do a, just a connected back stitch in your embroidery threads you can do that for the sake of time I'm going to do it on the machine I'm working with black so it's a little bit tricky to uh, use any kind of marker but I'm using I usually find on felt and dark fabrics if you use just a normal polychromo pencil so just an ordinary uh, colored pencil nice sharp point and you can find you can mark on there enough that you're going to be able to see when you pop that one on the, under the machine so I've got my heart there I've placed my little leaves either side it's really just connecting from the heart up to the first flower round to the second flower and continuing on to a couple of leaves there and you can make that in any configuration you like you could add more little leaves um, anything that you like and on this one I've gone ahead and I've also added by hand a couple of little extra sprigs here and there um, and I'm sure you very uh, clever people who do a lot of embroidery can certainly make something quite wonderful on there so I'm just giving you the basics here and you can elaborate any way you like so now that I've got those in place I'm going to remove my flowers and I can continue that line because it's easier to sew a, a continuous line on the machine and link it all up and I'm going to move that little flower and continue that line down so I can see it I don't know if you can see it but I can see it well enough to sew it and what I will do is remove everything except for the leaves I've removed my backing papers and I'm going to press those little leaves on because as I sew around I'm going to sew across those leaves to create those little centers so I'm going to go and press those on and do my stitching in green of course now there you can see my little leaves and my little stems are in place and I've been able to go ahead and press my little, two little flowers into place and I've gone ahead and with the way that we're going to be sewing these on is we're not going to be sewing around the outside of the flowers we're going to be actually stitching them on by sewing the diagonals across so you can see what I've done there with my ruler and just my very fine pen I'm going to be sewing over these lines and I've just made those sections right through each one to divide those little flowers and now I can take that one back to my machine and I can stitch straight through two times on each one of those lines and this little line here this stem I did sew that little that little stem line two times and I just went over a couple of those little joins just back and forth just to increase them a little bit these little shapes we're going to be adding our heart um, after these when the, when you're cutting out if you're looking for some little tips on cutting out little precise little shapes like these I'm going to put a video up the top there the link there I've got a video on laying out and cutting out that might uh, help you out there on those little pieces 
So I'm going to go ahead and stitch those little diagon diagonal lines into place and I like to use a thread colour that's just a bit darker than the flower on each one. You can see there my little segments are now stitched in, the little buttons will sit nicely over the top of those. We sew the buttons on after I put my wadding on the back so that it all compresses together so we'll leave those for now. Next step is to add our little heart. You can see I've pressed that one on into place. Now remember that we're going to be sewing our little bottom panel along here so you need to leave room for that seam allowance so you don't want that heart sitting too low. So I've pressed that one on. Now you can sew that one in a couple of ways. You can sew it on your machine if you like. Go around right close to that edge. If you want to sew it by hand, you can do as I'm doing. I've got my extra strong Gudeman thread here and I've chosen the yellow to match the flower. And I'm just gonna sew a blanket applique stitch right around that edge. I just like the, the way that looks on this little project and I've, I've used such a bright contrast just keeping in with all those colours. If you haven't sewn a blanket applique stitch before I'm going to put a link up there to my video that shows you exactly how to sew that one and I'm going to make my way right around that little heart shape. And now that my little heart is stitched in place I've just taken that same coloured thread and I'm just sewing some little long stitches across my little cotton reel at the top there making sure that you're coming from just on the edge of that little cotton reel and diving into the other side the same and just make sure that you show some fabric we don't want to pack it full we want to give the indication of thread and also they don't all have to be straight giving them a couple of little coming over on the diagonal is really sweet crossing them over a little and we get that lovely little thread spool there. So that's all of the work that I do to up to this point. Now there are a couple of things that you could do. You could add on your machine, you could sew your little thread going down and through in a different colour. I'm a bit of a, a bit of a neat freak so so I like it quite simple the way that it is but you could do quite some curly you know thread curling up and around and coming down that's entirely up to you like I said I've made it in the the most basic way and you can add to that any way that you like so now the next step is to add our little bottom panel and it's just right sides together we're going to line that one up and our seam allowance is still just the four millimeter seam allowance and we will be stitching just straight across along that bottom line. So that is our little bottom panel stitched into place and I've pressed that seam because this is quite bulky with all of those joins. I've just pressed that seam down and I've given the whole front a, a nice press and now next step is to add our little side strips. Now if your side strips don't exactly match up you've got some overlap don't worry no problem at all we will just trim those up it just depends on your seam allowances so we're going to put right sides together and we're just going to stitch those little side strips into place along each side and then we will fold them out and press those out there we have those little side panels on you can see i've pressed those seams out open and flat and we just repeat the exact same process with our top and bottom strips there and press those out also. Okay so now I have my all my borders on and my little quilt is pressed out nicely and I've taken my wadding and I have cut it just to be about a centimetre or so smaller than my back um, and so and I have gone ahead and pressed that one on into place because I don't want the wadding in my seams and bulking that all up. So now I can just go ahead and I'm going to sew on all of my little buttons in place and of course you can add more. Um, you can put, you could add any little embellishments that you like. I like to do it now because it's also stitched into that wadding and compresses those layers together but also all that sewing will be hidden before we put the back on. 
So now that I've got my button sewn into place, I've taken my prepared fabric that I have for the back, which has got my interfacing on it, and I have put my little quilt front down. So we've got right sides together and I've just pinned it on. And I'm just going to cut my back piece to exactly match my front piece. And once I have that one cut out, now I just have to sew my quilt front to my quilt back. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to leave an opening at the bottom there. You can see I've got a couple of marks there. It's about 12 centimetres I've left there open along the bottom. And I'm going to just stitch all the way around. You can increase your seam allowance to about 5 millimetre, which is probably closer to your quarter inch if you like. Um, and stitch all the way around there. Just reinforce your corners and of course your start and finish. If you're going to be hanging your little quilt, I'm making mine just as a, as a little placemat. If you want to hang your little quilt, now is when you would add in here into this top seam a couple of little ribbon loops or perhaps just a couple of little ties so that they're incorporated into that seam. And then when we turn it through, you'll have your little tabs that you can, you can add a quilt hanger to or perhaps just a little bit of uh, dowel um, and to hang that, one little, that little one up. But if not, you're just gonna sew that one right the way around. So there I have my little quilt all stitched together all the way around and I'm just gonna clip those corners off. It's quite a small seam, so I'm not going to trim it. And that will just help us push those little points out. And now I'm just going to turn that whole quilt through that little opening and give it a press. So there we've got our little quilt all turned through. And as I've done that, I've pressed those little edges under there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a top stitch right close to the edge all the way around which will also close that little uh, lower opening and then you can go ahead and you can stitch you can quilt this any way that you like additional stitching I'm just going to stitch actually right on that seam line um, just stitching in the ditch I'm going to stitch around the frame and I'm going to stitch along this panel edge here but you could go ahead and you could you could quilt all through here anything that you like and you can add whatever you like to that one so I'm going to go ahead close that one up and just do my final stitching there is all my final stitching done so that little panel is nicely settled in there with that stitching around those major areas there little opening is closed and that is our finished little mini quilt such a happy little quilt I think there's a few things you could do to it. You could add some little, some little fabric words would be nice down here. So maybe a little quote, a little sewing quote, or maybe somebody's name. What an incredible gift to make for someone. Or maybe just make it for yourself. Just make it for yourself. Be lovely to put your coffee cup on in your, in your little sewing room. So I hope you've enjoyed making it with me. If you do like the little mini quilts, have a look at my other videos. I've got a little kitty one and there's quite a few others there on my mini quilt playlist and I'm sure that I'll have many more to come. Well, thank you all for sewing with me today and making up this little project. It was pretty quick, wasn't it? It was a very happy little project. I hope it's made you happy. I hope you've enjoyed this video. You can give me a thumbs up if you have, that would be awesome. What do you think of the little mini quilts? Would you like to see more of them? And if you would like to see more of them, how about you tell me in the comments what you would like to see on them? What would you like to see featured in little mini quilts? And I'm sure I can accommodate you. Remember to follow me on Instagram because you can see sneaky peeks of uh, the little projects coming up. And you can also send me pictures, which I'm sure you will. Please send me pictures of your beautiful finished creations that you've made using my patterns. That's what keeps me going. And I thank you so much for all of your support, everyone. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, thank you so much. Good to have you with me. And if you haven't, you don't want to miss out on all of those free patterns coming your way. And there are so many coming, I can promise you. Most of all, everybody, all of those good things that come to you in your day, all those wonderful things, make sure that you pay them forward because we all can. Until next time, it's Huru from me.